Salutations, everybody, and welcome back to Coldcast, the podcast for all of us. I'm XLJ, the OG, and we have got a plethora of amazing guests today because we got an incredible topic we're going to be talking about. Of course, you know him, you love him, my partner in crime, my brother from another mother, Mr. B. How are we doing out there, world? Doing pretty awesome. Excited about this topic. This topic that you suggested, which I think is very appropriate. Uh, also with us, we are graced by the presence and the beauty of Mr. B-Roll's better half. Tiffany, hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you guys? Oh, we're doing awesome. And thank you for coming on. And of course, you know him, you love him. He's the Wrestle Talk Trip God himself, Hambone, and Boy Meets World's number one fan, perhaps. Well, as y'all know, uh, our last cold cast we actually did on TGIF Friday. So, as I said, Mr. B-Roll was like, yo, 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 we have got to do an episode de- dedicated strictly to One Boy Meets World. And I got I to gotta say, man, I'm, I'm excited about this one. Uh, I love me. I love me some Boy Meets World, but I got to admit, you guys are definitely like the super, super fans when it comes to One Boy Meets World. But I got to start off with this and say, what are you guys' earliest or first memories of Boy Meets World? I'll, I'll start with you, Mr. B-Roll. Oh, the, th- the thing I always think of with Boy Meets World is I, I literally just feel like I grew up with the characters. Um, it. It, it just it seemed like we were about that like same age and everything and so like i feel like i grew up grew up with them um that's really like just the first memories um i have of it like from them you know struggling in elementary school with uh mr feeney and then go like feeney 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 and like especially like that that transition like time frame that's such a weird thing to go through and like kind of felt like you had an example that you know would make you laugh and made you feel like you weren't alone yeah that's like that's a fair assessment uh getting all sentimental well, obviously, you showed your fandom from early on, and, and Tiffany, I'm going to assume too. Were you a huge fan growing up as well? Yeah, I'd say that you know some of the best memories were just coming home after school and putting it on, and you know just it being just the thing to do and the thing to watch. And I agree with uh, Mr. B. Roll that just kind of grew up with the characters as well. Nice. Did you guys find like your both your love for Boy Meets World like bonded you all the more even too? Oh, yeah. de- definitely. Like definitely many times. Well, before Disney Plus was a thing, mm-hmm. we we have all the DVDs. We oh, sure. of course. Yeah, like I, I mean now it's like oh well it's on Disney Plus and you know it's one of the many reasons we pay for Disney Plus, but. The perfect, like, feel-good show to binge, I guess. And um, I'll have to say, before, like, when I was in high school, I wanted to, like, rewatch the entire uh, series, and I found them on YouTube. And I watched them after school, after work, because I had a job. Um, so after working at the Shake Shack, I would sit at home and just binge watch them until I fall- fell asleep, so. That's awesome. My uh, Before Disney Plus happened one year i believe i don't remember what it was for whether it was for my birthday or uh christmas but my mother-in-law bought me the entire dvd set because just everybody knows how big a fan i am because i talk about it all the time and that was her gift to me that year and i was ecstatic about it to have the entire thing good gift dude that's awesome man like I, I, for me, like, I, I love, I thought it was a cool show and I really like watch it. I will admit, I think I've really kind of paid closer attention to it in the earlier years than the later years as I got older. But like, I mean, I was a huge fan of TGIF Friday, man. And I, I just remember when it was coming in the lo- onto the lineup there and I was like, oh, okay, this is kind of interesting. And boy, oh boy, did this show like take off. And I mean, there you could say. 
maybe it's the best show that was on TGIF Friday? You know, the funny, I mean, for me it is because, you know, it literally is one of my all-time favorite shows. You know, if we take wrestling out of it and we're just talking all-time favorite shows, Boy Meets World is probably number one for me, if I'm being honest. But the funny thing that I think about it is that it was never the show for TGIF. I mean, if you look back at its history... You know, and especially if you listen to Pod Meets World with uh, Danielle Fischel and Will Friedle and Ryder Strong, you know, they talk all the time about how the show was almost always on the chopping board every year. They were never sure if they were going to come back for another season, and they somehow lasted seven years. But even after that, they, it was, I feel like they got even more popular years later because Boy Meets World kind of had this second life. Uh, with reruns on MTV. I feel yeah. Like, yeah, I feel like that's where they really got popular because another, even though it was only a couple years, another generation was almost introduced to it um, that had never seen it before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's almost the true definition of a cult classic, I feel yeah. like, because I, yep. like you say, I think a new generation found it and gravitated towards it. And I think that speaks volumes for this show of how well it was written and done because you have other generations that can relate to like some of the topics, some of the characters, and so on. Sure. Yeah. It's timeless. It's timeless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it really is. Now, I found interesting about this is, is how it really actually came to be. So essentially what happened is, of course, Walt Disney Company, as we all know, uh, pretty much owns ABC, and they commissioned the uh, the for a youth oriented youth oriented series on TGIF, uh, and it ended up like from the same producers who brought us Dinosaurs, which Dinosaurs is an incredible show too. Um, I have to admit, when I first started watching this show, I was just like. Okay, it's the show that's got Fred Savage's younger brother in it. But man, it's kind of funny how that, like, over time, it's like, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you with a, with the hot question here, right off the bat, guys. Which show do you think had more, like, more of an impact? Boy Meets World or The Wonder Years? Mm. Personally, or. I if you gotta take the personally out of it, I know because I know you'd all say Boy Meets World. I I, I, I I'm gonna say Wonder Years because I get, like you kind of just said, XLJ. I feel like Boy Meets World is more of a cult classic, whereas I feel like Wonder Years um, was more of a widely popular show that reached more people. I feel like so. I would probably say Wonder Years. I, I, yeah, I definitely, I mean, that makes sense. But I, to me, I think I would honestly say Boy Meets World. And the reason I'd say that is just because of, of, of I mean, I guess at the time, yes, definitely was Wonder Years. But I think overall longevity, I think I get to Boy Meets World because I think people still talk about Boy Meets World to this day, as sure. whereas not as many people talk about the Wonder Years. So. Yeah. You know, That's the funny a- part about it, too, is when Boy Meets World started, I mean, it wasn't even Boy Meets World. Like, they literally started it. The, the series was created around Ben Savage. It was originally just called the Ben Savage Project because they didn't have a name for it. Disney just wanted a show for Fred Savage's brother, and that's how it started. That's interesting. I didn't realize. I didn't know that. I'll be darned. So it was just called the Ben Savage Show. Wow. Well, it was never, never on TV as that. Uh, that Oh, it's just kind of referred to that. Okay. It was just the Ben Savage Project because they wanted to make a show around him. Well, and you know what's interesting? We talked about how it was like not really like the flagship show of TGIF Fridays. But if you look back on the history of TGIF Fridays, I believe it is the longest reigning show that was in the block. Yeah. Of, yeah like I mean, of seven years. Years, so they went seven years, but they were constantly moved around times. And I think they had more time moves than probably any other show, too. Yeah. And I think the cool thing about this show, too, was literally we got to see these characters grow up in front of our eyes pretty much. Uh, and you know, like you, like B roll was saying, like we were like right there in that kind of like that same age group, so to speak. 
Uh, so I think that was really cool that, you know, we were all able to kind of witness that and see their growth uh, over the years. So, yeah, uh, I'll go note. ahead. Sorry, side note to that. You know, I feel like a lot of shows today, they'll go a season or two with a character and then that character will, character will be replaced. And I feel like, yes, I know that Morgan was replaced uh, by season three, I believe. Um, but how many other characters were actually actually replaced on the show? Yeah. Yeah. Topanga's parents. Huh? Yeah, Topanga's Topanga parents, parents were several yeah. times. Changed like three times throughout the show. Yeah. But they also weren't main characters either. True. Yeah, they definitely weren't no Reg, Reginald Fairfield. <laughs> but you guys make a good point. I mean, I mean, I think one of the strongest things of, uh, of the reason why Boy Meets World was so popular is the cast of characters, man. And I mean, first off, I got to ask, who, uh, who's your guys' favorite character? So I always uh, very much connected with Sean. Um, because I saw a lot of myself in Sean, because I also come from, you know, a broken home and a messed up family and, um, you know, parents who struggled with stuff, you know, whether it's addiction or, or um, depression or all that. So I, I saw a lot of myself in Sean, and I always uh, very much connected with the character. Yeah, Sean, Sean is like, I feel like, kind of the heart and soul of this show, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sean was always my favorite character. I actually wanted to name my firstborn son, Sean. Um, but yeah, I agree. Yeah, now it's changed after my grandpa, if we ever did. <laughs> um, You're like, this is news to me, honey. No. <laughs> before my grandpa passed away, though, it was, it was Sean. It was always Sean, and um, you know, I also come from a broken home and I, I, I can just like relate to Sean a lot because I feel like he was a lost soul for many, many years. And I feel like they did him justice though. At the very end, I feel like they really did him justice. So I'd have to say, Sean, I am also, I love Jonathan Turner and the relationship. Um, it would have meant a lot to me to just kind of have that person in my life, which I, I didn't, um, but I, I don't know. I just kind of connected to him a lot, too. Um, so the the duo, I'd say, was my favorite. That is, yeah, one, of, only that on is my, one of my biggest hang-ups about this goddamn series. Because he was on... He, Turner Justice, no. Yeah, because he's only on a couple the seasons, last right? time we see Mr. Turner is in a hospital bed yes. after a motorcycle accident, and we never see him again and never know what happened to him until uh -huh. Girl Meets. Yeah. Oh, okay. I have not watched Girl Meets World. I am fucking intrigued. What the hell happened to him? Well, I mean, I'll I'll be honest. I don't really remember because I've only yeah. watched Girl Meets World in the original run. I'm planning on watching it again because uh, I'm going through my yearly watch of Boy Meets World, and after it's over, I'm gonna rewatch Girl Meets World. But he did appear on it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But it just kind of gave us the answer of, oh, Mr. Turner didn't die. Because that's what yeah. we were all wondering. Yeah, dead, we will never see him again. Yeah, I was like, man, this guy is like almost as impactful as Feeney. And then, like, yeah. then he's just like Absolutely. fucking on. It's like, and especially too, like you say, it's like, okay, he's in an accident, he's in the hospital. Um, bye. It's like, yeah. What? Boy, meets or... world, Boy Meets World, as much as I love it, they did have a habit of getting rid of characters that were really good. You know, no, like Minkus. I mean, we, we all feel like Minkus was in that show forever. He was only in the first season. Yeah. And I don't Is that understand right? him. Yeah. And I don't ah. understand why he wasn't brought back. He was such a good comedic tool that they could have used for a million other things. Yeah, um, I didn't know he was only on one, one season. Yeah. yeah. They brought him back in the seventh season for like graduate, or not the seventh, gosh. the I think it's fifth seasons when they graduate. Yeah. Uh, they brought him back. Uh, for graduation, which is funny because yeah. you know he goes off into the unknown hallway and he sees Mr. Turner there. Uh, you see yeah. him in the back, or you hear him in the background saying, "Mr. Turner, wait up!" Oh yeah. man! So, but yeah, I, 
I would have to go with Mr. Turner. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. cool. Nice. Why Mr. Turner? Just because of everything we just said? Just because, I mean, yeah. I mean, because he was always that, like, you know, that cool teacher, that teacher you wish you, like, you wish you always had. And yeah. he was just the bomb dot com. Mm-hmm. Like, I know for me personally, always pulls his heart, my heartstrings. And like, I, this man is an incredible human being. I have to go with William Daniels or AKA Mr. Feeney was my favorite. I mean, I don't know. Mr. Feeney is like one of those classic all time, great father, like wise love caring, like uh, adults and like any TV show. Like, I mean, maybe the guy, like I'll never forget too, like the, the, the speech he gives like it, you know, in the classroom uh, there. The, oh man. That's so like, yeah. Well, I'm like, just that's thinking like, about it. Pull, pulling pulling the curtain back, like, I know you had said, like, in the layout, like, we're going to talk about, um, like, one lesson, you know, we, lear- we learn. Like, that's instantly, like, the first thing that pops in my head is, like, that final speech. Mm-hmm. When, like, they're, they're all sitting, and they're, like, original seats, do good. Right? Oh man, and it's yeah. so it's so simplistic and so beautiful, you know. And then he freaking at the end says class dismissed it. Uh, <laughs> I love you all. That. They they say it and he refuses. And when they leave, it's I love you all, class dismissed. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> such a good such such a good moment. So many come home come home to me, honey, and let's watch some boy it's world. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to. Well, I have to say this. As much as I loved Mr. Feeney, like, as a young man, there was one character who I was always tuning in every Friday night. And yeah. One Topanga. Oh, yeah. That's right, Topanga. I confess my love to you then. I confess my love to you now. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm listen, sorry. listen. Every every boy that grew up in the '90s had one of two crushes: either the Pink Power Ranger or Topanga Lawrence. And every yeah. girl either wanted to be the Pink Power Ranger or Topanga <laughs> Lawrence. And yes, I wanted to be both. <laughs> Respect, man. Like, dude, I crush it hard on some Topanga. Like, and she. she yeah. Danielle Fischel is an amazing person, a beautiful, beautiful woman. Uh, big wrestling fan, too. And a big wrestling fan. It's just like, oh, man, God, it's like the perfect scenario. But <laughs> uh, she is married, though, right? Yeah. Which, if Damn only she'll divorce her, her husband and come running to you. Maybe she'll see this show. I'll let you play with my typhoon action figure. <laughs> 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 just saying. I don't know why. He was the closest one by me. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Um, and I mean, also, too, like, a, a great cast of, like, side characters on this one, too, man. Um, I think, for me, um, I the guy I really loved, um, and you guys are going to hate me because I can't remember his name on the show, but um, Fader's Kid. Like, what was his name? Oh. Um, oh yeah. uh, Frankie. Um, Frankie, yeah. Frankie. Frankie, thank you, Frankie. I think Frankie was like my favorite kind of like yeah. side, like mid card character. And mainly, yes, because, and that was the other thing for me that got me like kind of watching this was like Fader's appearance on Boy Meets World as a yeah. recurring character yeah. as Frankie's dad. But I thought there was just like, as a fat guy, I related a lot to Frankie, you know, he's just like this big dude, but he had this sweet part of a soul. He was so complex. Yeah, he was. Like, like literally the definition. You know, like he's all hardball. He's the one that stuffs the kids in lockers, but really deep down, truly a caring and loving person. Yeah, that's that's a that's a very good way of putting it. He is a very caring and loving person. 
Um, is there any of these like characters like that was like side characters, and even if they was in there for a little bit, that was kind of like really stuck out or resonated with you guys? I mean, I was... we... Sorry, go ahead. I would say we already talked about me, like me kiss. Like I don't know about resonating, but he was just a like he was a great char- character, and like wish he would have like you know stuck around more. Um, Eric's friend in those earlier seasons. Yeah. I I can't think of was it Jason? Jason, yep. Yeah. Yeah. He was always the uh the Mr. and Mrs. Matthews. I mean they were I mean they are they especially their relationship with Sean, like how they basically like just take him in is just I could go on and on. All the yeah. characters. Yeah. I think um, Sean's father, Chet, is a good one. Um, because yeah, really, if you if you think about his character, it's a very complex character, too. Because, like, he's clearly, you know, for the most part, a deadbeat dad. And you're, you're not really supposed to like him. But he's just so goddamn charismatic and funny that you can't help but like his character. And you know, want better for his and Sean's relationship. Um, so he's definitely up there for me. Um, I, the random one that I think they should have done more with was they had the one episode where uh, uh, Corey was dating uh, Harley's sister, TK. And I think that that character could have done a lot more if, we, if they had kept her. Like maybe she could have been, you know, Sean's girlfriend because they were both, you know, the the bad kid characters and stuff. Um, so those would be my favorites. I think Frankie or Frankie and uh, Joey the Rat were great characters too. And I think that Joey could have been used so much more. He was hilarious. Yeah. Every just the way he talked with that like stereotypical New York bully accent, but he's like this little weaselish guy and he just had perfect comedic timing. So I would have loved to see him in more storylines than just be a side character. Yes. You know, I'm finding it interesting that we have not, we're, we're, we're sticking, we're talking to the side characters in like the earlier seasons, but like, as they get older, you know, we get introduced to Jack and, Rachel and Angela. I I loved Angela. Mm-hmm. I I liked Jack. I wasn't a big Rachel fan, honestly. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of agree with that. I don't. I didn't mind her character, but I did. I loved Angela. Mm-hmm. Um, I loved her and Sean's relationship, even though it was. I mean, the whole point of it was that it was a tumultuous relationship. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, I, I almost feel like Rachel was almost a throwaway character, even though she was a regular character, it was almost like she was brought on just to have something for, uh, Eric and Jack to constantly butt heads over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was almost like she was just a side yeah. character that they weren't putting a lot of actual work into fleshing out and actually making her like a, an entire whole character. So I think that's probably why a lot of people don't really resonate. Yeah. With it. I do like the Eric and, uh, J- or Eric and Jack combination or, and even yeah. like when Sean, like when it's the three of them, yeah. Oh man. And yeah. I think like Corey's doing that documentary about them living <laughs> together or something like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I, it was like the real world. Yeah, th- there's some good there's some good comedy in that in that in that one. Isn't there a moment there with like the apartment where the girls like take over the apartment? Yeah. That's yeah, at one point they almost kind of kicked all the boys out of it and take it over. Yeah. yeah. I didn't like that. I thought that was stupid. I uh you know, it's talking about funny, like we gotta give credit where credit is do like maybe one of the funniest brothers of all time one eric matthews played by the great will uh, friedel like his character like i feel like they kind of started off with his character as being just like kind of the jerk older brother 
And then, like, he becomes this lovable, like, part of the gang, so to speak, and, like, one of the best characters on the show, man. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely, he was definitely just stereotypical, you know, bully, older brother who was obsessed with women. I mean, they even talk about a lot on on Pod Meets World about how, you know, just randomly they would throw him some comedic things, and he would just take it and make it his own, and as soon as they saw it, they are like, all right, that's what we're doing. You're the comedy character now, and he he was great at it. He was hilarious in every single episode. He you want to you want to know something funny, and this is something that I am still in trouble with my wife with to this day. But I learned this when we went to Comic Con and we saw Ryder Strong and uh, R- 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 Will Friedle. Um Sean's jacket was originally intended for Eric. Yep, yep, it was Eric's uh, leather jacket on the show, and they got passed down to a couple people, and then ended up being Sean's. Which is crazy because, like, you just can't imagine Sean without the jacket and Eric in that jacket. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. The the, the, there there are two people that made me want to wear leather jackets. One of them. (laughs) Was Raven, and the other one was Sean Hunter. Nice. That leather jacket is just synonymous with him and the bad boy character. And I, as a kid, I just wanted a leather jacket because I just wanted to look like Sean Hunter. So he took that jacket, and someone stole it out of his car. Yep. Yes. Yeah, in uh, New York or like somewhere. Was he staying in New York or something? I think he said it at that Comic Con we were at. Yeah. I think so. Uh, don't, don't remind my wife. Don't give her more fuel. Which, by the way, you can catch that vlog as a replay here on Cold TV from a couple years ago, our Indiana Comic Con vlog. Just saying, cheap plug. He um, literally didn't even tell me. He just sent me videos and pictures of them, and I was so mad. Now, now, Tiffany, you you were invited to go with us. I'm just saying. I and you know what? I think I probably said yes, and Brent was like, "No, you'll hate it. This and that. This and that." I tried to save you, buddy. So you're on your own. I'm on the hot seat. Still, I'm on the hot yeah. seat. He's still in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> how long we've been, how long we've been married? Almost nine years, baby. Uh, it, it's been a good run. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me ask you guys what in throughout the history of Boy Meets World, what's like some of your more favorite episodes or memorable episodes? It's funny because before I think you hopped on here, that's exactly like what we were talking about, and. I will go first because I don't want anybody else to take this one. Um, probably one of my all-time favorite episodes is the one Corey goes in to have his tonsils removed, and Sean's telling him about people disappearing in the hospital. Classic. And oh my gosh, when they have like, what's that guy's name? What's that guy's like? Or they do like the miss, like legit missing persons thing. He's the real guy. I I can't think of his name. The oh. real guy that has that show. Was it from Unsolved Mysteries? Like Robert yes. Stack? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like oh, it's just like this bed empty. <laughs> this, and my favorite part of that episode is where before he goes into surgery, he calls Feeney. And he's like, this is all my homework, 60 years. But Feeney has to, like, go to the airport and get get a, a suitcase. And then, you, you know, it flashes to Feeney. I'm, I'm actually very bright. I've actually understood everything you have ever taught me. Yeah. In this airport locker, you will find every single homework assignment and everything is correct. Yep. And, and so then it flashes to, like, Feeney actually, like, he's got the suitcase. He's got the homework. And he's like. It's all here in these papers. They're brilliant. And the guy asked him, so does that change how you feel about Corey Matthews? Eh, not really. <laughs> That's the same. <laughs> so for me, the funny part about it is that it tends to be um, the more serious, emotional ones that are my favorites. Um, I am definitely a bigger fan of the... Um, later years over the earlier years but one of my favorite episodes is from the first season which is uh grandma was a rolling stone 
where uh, Ruth McClanahan of the Golden Girls, uh, she comes on as um, Corey and Eric's um, grandmother. And one of the moments in it that like really sticks with me is at the end, you know, it, it's clear that um, their grandmother is not going to show up for something that she promised uh, Corey that she was going to do. And uh, Corey's mother, Amy, is trying. She knows, um, you know, her 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 habits. She knows that she is not going to show up and she is trying her damnedest to break it to Corey without just saying, hey, your grandmother is not going to show up and you need to accept that this is who she is. Um, so that's one of my favorites. I my probably my favorite episode is in uh, season five. Um, if you can't be with the one you love, which is where they really dive into uh, Sean having a drinking problem. And that resonates with me because I grew up around a lot of alcoholism. Um, so that's one of my favorites. And also, um, I can't think of the name of the episode, but it's the one where uh, Sean almost gets uh almost joins a cult that is my <laughs> yeah. favorite episode i yeah, think i to say it yeah uh, i i cult fiction yeah i i am also obsessed with cults like yeah. cults and serial killers and stuff they fascinate me um so to have that in there and just really the ending of it too where you know Corey is just so he just grabs sean and and gives him a hug and he's like this is a hug this is what people who care about you do and they don't care about you and he's just so emotional about trying to show his best friend that hey you've already got a family you don't need you know these people who don't even know you or anything so those yeah. are some of my favorites yeah that's probably the realest episode it's so deep that is absolutely my favorite episode is cult fiction mm -hmm. um i ugly cry on it every time and it just means and it means a lot that you know it shows in the waiting room, the leader of the cult and Alan Matthews is like, he's about to punch him because he cares so yeah. much about Sean, him yeah. and Peter are right there. And they're, they're sticking up for Sean and the cult leader's like, what do you think, Sean? Sean's gone. And he is in, uh, it's also the same episode that Jonathan Turner has his mo yeah. motorcycle. I was just going to say that too. Yep. That's the last yeah. episode for Mr. Turner. It is, which is sad, but oh my gosh, that, that <sighs> episode is just gut wrenching. And I just love the realness of the time. I think that's the perfect episode for the age of the kids that watch that. I mean, what better, what better things to show kids than, uh, you know, the what love really is. And it just has so many good life lessons. And uh, so that's my all-time favorite episode. I also like more serious episodes. So um, the episode's probably in season five or six where... Um, I think Topanga and Corey are kind of having an argument. Sean is out with his dad and, um, the, the baby brother is born and the baby brother is, is early and there's some complications and, um, you know, that one's just, Sean comes back from his trip and he's there for Corey in that most difficult time. And, um, they go in and they see the little baby. And so that one's kind of gut wrenching. Um, probably the more less serious, but one of my favorite episodes, I think it's season, season two or season three. I'm a big Halloween fan. And the one where Corey thinks he's turning into a werewolf. I just love that episode. It's hilarious. Yes. Um, yeah. So. We watched that one just the other night. We did. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I love all of it. Um, another one of my favorites is the one where, um, like Mr. Turner and Eric are saying that like Corey and Feeney don't take risk or whatever it is. And, you know, ultimately it ends up, um, they end up on that roller coaster, Feeney and, uh, <laughs> <Corey>. <laughs> oh, but then that, they, like after their first go around, they, they get out and they pull. Uh, yep. They yep. pull Turner and is it Sean or is it Eric? Eric. Eric. Eric yeah. They yeah. pull them in and make them go. <laughs> yes. And then another one I'm thinking of too. Um, not. I don't want to say time travel, but the uh, the fifties where he goes back into the 
the 50s is is it the 50s no well that's a great one but that's actually not the one i'm thinking of um where it's like the alternate universe and like eric's the detective and oh, the one where uh oh, yeah. where he has amnesia and he ends up in france yeah no i think he's talking about the one it's like i think it's season seven because they're married and in the apartment yeah. and Corey finds or maybe it's topanga first topanga first finds the like secret room in the shoe closet or whatever yeah, yeah, and and then one of them ends up dead or something. You know, it's like it, it's got like a murder mystery type vibe. That's a good one. I forgot about oh. that one. I was thinking one of my favorite was the uh, the I don't I don't I think it's the one the one where um, uh, there's like a killer in the uh, school. Yeah, that's and it ends up being Sean at the end. But there are just so many hilarious moments on that one i love the there's the the one kid who's on there who's not like a regular but they were acting like he was and they kill him by putting a, a pencil through his head and then he falls and it goes through the wall and he falls down and Corey goes up and goes we'll always remember he was that tall yeah i love <laughs> the scene in that episode where the, i think right before he gets killed they they're like discussing who's gonna get killed first, and he's and they say him, and he's like, "Why me?" And one of the characters is like, "Well, you don't think it's gonna be one of us, do you?" <laughs> yeah. I, I also love they were talking about. Well, you know, you know, the virgins never die, and Corey turns to Bang and goes, "Oh, hey, thanks." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Like the, I only kind of like I gotta be honest with you guys. Like I, I vaguely, I didn't watch it religiously, but I vaguely remember the latter season. Most of my memories of Boy Meets World is probably like the first two, three seasons. Um, some of the episodes that are one. Well, obviously I said one. The one with Fader, and then I always love the one where it's like Corey's got to go back and forth between like Topanga's birthday party and like Fader's yeah. wrestling Jake the Snake Roberts and stuff. Like I, that was always one that was great. And then um, I, there was, I think it was a Thanksgiving one and where like uh, Corey's parents and family, they all go over to Sean's oh, yeah. like trailer and it's kind of just like these two different oh, types yeah, of, yeah. yeah, you know, you got the middle class and lower class or whatever, which I always thought, like, I thought it was cool with Sean being in a trailer because, you know, we all talk about relatability. I grew up in a trailer as a kid, man. So I thought I that was well. cool that they showed on television. So, you mm -hmm. know. I think one of the my my favorite things about Boy Meets World, even as a kid, I felt this way was that it was a show for kids, yes, but they never treated us as children. They right. Boy Meets World constantly tackled um, real life important issues like racism and um, you know things like that. Cults, they did yeah. not down to us they treated us as yeah you're kids but you can handle talking about these things so i always loved that about the show is that there was always a realism to it and it, it just wasn't like uh, uh you know candy and rainbows like kid show they did not treat us like children who couldn't handle serious topics yeah. Yeah. i was about I, like yeah i'll go ahead tip I was just going to say, I probably learned more from the show than I did, you know, from my parents or from my family. Definitely. Yeah, sure. yeah. yeah, I always thought the show was, like, great about, like, spreading the message of, like, equality, you know, and just, like, there, it doesn't matter, like, classes, color of your skin, right. what your sexuality, like, none of that. You know, we're all, like, equal. We're all, like, human beings at the end of the day. Let me ask you guys this. What was, like, what do you think is probably, like, one of the uh, better or one of your favorite like storylines from uh, Boy Meets World. I mean, the one I always go to, I think, I mean, at the center of the story, right, is Topanga and Corey, right? Their love affair, you know, like their the early years and then like latter years, they broke up for a while and ended up getting back together. I mean, that's kind of like the first real storyline I think of. I gotta say, it's Corey and Sean's friendship. Um, it grows very, very deep throughout mm -hmm. the uh, but what's funny, um, I can't remember the season, season three or season four, probably. And 
Sean's dating the girl that does not like Corey. And <laughs> they have to sneak around behind her back to, <laughs> to see each other and talk to each other. And <laughs> Corey bakes the library it? scene. Yes, the library scene. I just love it. Uh, but you know, like they just have such a deep and true friendship. One for the one for the you know the book. So that's definitely my favorite storyline. Also, I've got to say uh, Jonathan Turner and Sean Hunt Hunter's storyline. I wish they would have done more with that. I honestly yeah. wish that Mr. Turner could have adopted Sean. Um, oh, that would have been amazing. It would have been amazing. I get why they didn't because they wanted to continue kind of Sean's you know, struggle, I guess. Um, but I would have definitely liked to see that and then see like his, you know, check come back in and the conflicting feelings there between the two. Um, but I just, I love their relationship as well. Nice. I mean, it's um, not, not exactly storylines, but just, I, I'm, they are storylines, but not like specific ones, you know, for it's two for me, it's, it's Sean's struggle, the entire show, you know, his struggle to, find himself and struggling with being a low class person who doesn't want to be low class and feels like he can't get out of being low class and just his struggle with everything because I felt that as a kid myself. Uh, but also the relationship between uh, Feeney and Eric because it's just that obviously was not like the intention at first when the show started, you know, it was obviously supposed to be Feeney and Corey and, you know, when uh, Feeney and Eric started working together and it was clear that that just worked better. Um, there was just always this love that you felt from Feeney for Eric. Like he just would not give up on him when it felt like everybody else did, even sometimes his own parents. Yeah, um, but he would not. He knew that Eric was not an idiot. He was just eccentric, and he needed to figure out how to apply that uh, in life. So, yeah, I love the different. I mean, obviously, Feeney and Corey have a relationship, and Feeney yeah. and Sean have a relationship. But yeah, Feeney and Eric definitely had had a different relationship, a different, very meaningful relationship. I remember the one where I can't remember why. But Eric and Feeney go to the, um, oh, the, it's like a show. It's like a play. The opera? Yes, the opera. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you guys, uh, or let me ask you, Mr. Beaver, what was your favorite storyline? Um, I think really... And it's it's hard to pick, but I, I think what it narrows down to is just like the relationships and like the different relationships. Um, like you like you kind of have like that constant of, you know, Corey and Topanga. Like even when they're not together, you know they're going to end up together. But I think really too, I think like kind of like you guys were saying, the mentorship between like Eric and Feeney, or even like. Even just Feeney, like with all of the kids, like, like yeah. really, like I mean, just that like special one of a kind teachers, were, like those, those were Feeney's kids, and like when you, when you put the bow on it, and like you're going down to the very end, and that final, like that final scene, like, like those. Mr. Feeney was special to them, and those kids were special to Mr. Feeney. Like, true words could not be said, my friend. All right, well, I'm going to put you all on the spot here because I have got some Boy Meets World trivia for you. All well, right. I'll, cool. I'll say this if you want to go ahead and ask a question to my better half, because I think she has to get. Yes, no, I was going, going to start with her. I do, yeah. yeah. All right, well, before you go, I got to ask you, Tiffany. Corey, Sean, Eric, and Topanga are best friends in Philadelphia. What's the name of their high school? John Adams High School. 
that was easy. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, okay, wait a minute. I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe U.S. You know what? Why don't we just put Tiff on the spot here? We're gonna quiz you. Oh God. There's just a couple more questions here. All right, let's go. All right. Topango moved to Philadelphia in sixth grade. What city is her family from? Ooh, I don't know. I know she's about to phone I a friend. Know she almost moves to Pittsburgh. Let me. Is it Pittsburgh? No. If I don't not, know. I'll, I'll phone a friend. You don't know the answers to these, Sandra. Yeah, you don't know the answers. What? You're supposed to know the answers. I'm, I'm waiting for the thing to load up, Hambo. <laughs> it's not telling me. I don't know. Shit. I've lost control of this show. He's taking a BuzzFeed quiz right now so that he can make some content. That's what's happening. If he's it's not Pittsburgh, somebody he's stuck, it he's stuck on an, a. It must app. not have been Pittsburgh because it didn't pop up anything. Hmm. Do you guys know? I don't know if I know what it is then. I thought, because so I kind of thought she was moving back to Pittsburgh because that's where her family was. Yeah, because that's where, well, no, that's not true. I was going to say that's where her aunt is, but that's not true. Her aunt is in Philadelphia because yeah, she, she stays with her aunt. Yeah. Well, if it's well, Pittsburgh, for... I was right. So let's go. Let's say it's Pittsburgh, even though it's not telling me. I don't know. It's being cool. a jerk. What about Mr. Turner? What subject did he teach? English. Yay! That's right. And then what subject did Beanie teach? A it's lot. Great. All of them. <laughs> the main one. Was okay. What grade? What, what grade did he teach? All of them. <laughs> Every single one. What about what about following their first breakup? Corey follows Topanga where to get back together? Disney World. Yeah, it told me that one. Oh, that's great. a good episode too. My phone will die. Just so you know, if it dies. That's where I went. All right. I'm going to ask you one last question. We'll let you go, Tiffany. Cool. Where did Sean and Angela have their first date? Mm. Oh, man. I can give you some multiple choices. Yeah, give me multiple choices. That'd be great. Uh, Mazzaminos, Barales, or Mama Angelinas? Now, is this before or after the two weeks? Because we start their relationship off after the two weeks, you know, where... Sean only has a girlfriend for two weeks and then he dumps them and moves on. And, but then he realizes that Angela is the one for him. Um, I, feel like I, I, believe, I think that. that's where he's going is after the two weeks. Okay. I think that's probably where they're going to. Yes. Okay. Give me really quick. I think we lost. Him. Oh no. Phone just died. Oh, no. 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 Oh. I'm here. I'm here. Give me multiple choices again, real quick. Mazaminos, Barales, or Mama Angelinas. Oh, I'm gonna say either the first one or the last one. Uh, Mazaminos or Mama's Angelinas. Yeah, I'm gonna say Mazamias, maybe. I'll it's... be honest. I have no clue. I feel like Mama Angelinas is the only one that sounds familiar, though. I'm pretty sure. I know, it's but the... I feel like that's too obvious. You're pretty sure it's what? Barales. It is Barales. Oh, well, yes. how many? I only got still, one wrong, though. But still, though, congratulations. You did an amazing yes. job. And we hey, know guys. you. Hey, we can't all be as dedicated <laughs> as Mr. Hambone here. Yep. He is so dedicated, in fact. Before you go, love of my life, my better half. <laughs> yes. This is an Amazing. actual picture of Hambones tattoo. Amazing. I'm jealous. <laughs> wow. Wow. It's majestic. It is. It's amazing. I can't stop <laughs> looking at it. Uh, cool thing about it is when I got it, I um, put it on Twitter, and Will Friedel was still on Twitter, and he saw it and retweeted it, which was pretty cool. Woohoo! Nice. That is pretty cool. I hope to one day show him in real life. They would fucking come around here sometime. Yeah. That'd be nice. 
Gotta make well, that guys, happen, I've, I've loved being part of the show. I, I want to thank you all for having me, and it, it was great getting a, uh, being able to share just my love of the show with all of you. So, um, thank you to those who are who will watch and are watching, and um, I hope you guys have a good night. And, and I'll thank see you, you soon. so much for coming on. All right. Yep. I'll see you soon, babe. All right. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye. Oh, I love that you both share this in common, your love for uh, Boy Meets World. I mean, on, cool. honestly, between like Boy Meets World and Ping Pong, our love for Ping Pong. We just got to get her into pro wrestling. Like, like Boy Meets World and Ping Pong and Chinese food were at like the core of our relationship <laughs> in the very early days. And that's how you know. It's meant to be. It's meant yeah. to be. The important stuff. The, the important stuff. This is all true. Well, boys, as we round out our discussion here on Boy Meets World, I want oh, to ask you. Are talking about it already? I know, man. It's it's hard to believe, but there, we could talk about this forever and ever, and ever. I literally could because it's like, and it's like as we keep talking, I keep thinking of other things and like. I also have Disney Plus pulled up on my other screen here, and I'm looking like through episodes, and I'm like. Well, I gotta be honest. One. I'm I am watching some Boy Meets World after we get done here. Like, I yeah, I feel like I got going on too. Um, but what I want to ask you guys is, what is some of the life lessons you think? I mean, we kind of talked. You mentioned this earlier a little bit, B roll. But what do you think are some of the great life lessons taken away from this incredible show? Yeah. So I'm not gonna, you know, talk do the one or we talked about earlier where it's just. It's so true, though, but, like, just do good. Um, but I will I, I will say this. I think with, with Eric um, especially, just like that, ne- never giving up. And, like, and just, like, Feeney's belief in him and just, like, like, knowing he can do it. And just, like, that that never giving up mentality. And then also I think too, the importance of like having like that mentor as well. It kind of goes like to get like uh, having, having the mentor. um, And then. Yeah. There's somebody who could be so impactful on your life, especially at a young age. And I mean, yeah, you think about like teachers and stuff and just how impactful they can be on, on a youth man. It like really they're they make a huge difference in any kid's life. What about you, Hambo? So for me, the biggest thing uh, for boy meets world. And I feel like it's pretty much in every episode. I feel like it's the core of boy meets world. The lesson of the entire show is just to be a good person. Uh, in every way possible. You know, I feel like every episode in some way is aimed at the characters trying to be better to the people in their lives, whether that's be a better son, be a better father, be a better spouse, girlfriend, boyfriend, be a better friend, whatever. That is what I feel like the main lesson uh, of the show is. And that is what I take from it um it's just to just be a good person you're gonna mess up you're gonna make mistakes um but to always try to repair those relationships and keep them strong in your lives because at the end of the day that is what matters most and i i think too i think the show shows you you know it definitely it definitely helps to have some friends along the way to have have the have the good and the good times and the bad times um with so yeah and i think that's cool about this show is like you got to see these characters at their best and their absolute worst man and everything Mm -hmm. else in between so guys in closing i gotta ask you one last question here what do you think is ultimately the legacy of boy meets world legacy yeah, as far as like the impact on pop culture in general. 
I feel like this is that one show. I mean, there's each generation has their own they can gravitate towards, but I don't know. The, to me, there's just something special about this. Like you guys are saying, like the life lessons you learn. We talked about it as far as like the equality, like amongst everybody. It doesn't matter like who, what wake of life you come from. Like we're all in this together, you know. And it's like you look at the friendship of Sean and Corey, you know. And it's like they were friends just because they, you know, they bonded and loved each other over time, you know. Um, you could say the same with uh, Corey and Topanga as them like falling in love with each other and stuff too. Yeah. Honestly, it kind of helped that Topanga was really hot, but I'm just saying. I, I feel really like that is um, their legacy more than, you know, there's so many, especially during this time, there were so many sitcoms that were, you know, about families. I mean, that's what mostly, that's what most sitcoms are. They're about families and, you know, the things that they go through and things like that. But I feel like um, their legacy is that, and again, it's kind of the same as what the core lesson that I took from them, which is that, you know, um, the things that truly matter are the people in your lives. I feel like Boy Meets World, uh, you know, drove that home a lot more than other shows did, no matter what it was about, whether it was about, you know, your, your best friend or Corey and Topanga's relationship. You know, I feel like everybody... Uh, from our generation during that time, like that's what we aspire to was to have the relationship that Corey and Topanga had, which if we're being honest, you know, as an adult looking back a little bit creepy, they were a little too obsessed with each other at times, but you know, I think they, they were again, just trying to drive home the point of, you know, when you care about somebody, when you love somebody, you do everything that you can um to keep them in your lives and i think that that is why uh the show resonates still and i think that that's what their legacy is yeah i would say and i said it earlier too i i think it the show really it does stand the test of time um because it's it's growing up um and um i i think ultimately um the show is just it's very relatable um Mm -hmm like it it did a good job of like give me examples of real life situations whether it be family drama um and they showed it in different forms right like i very much came from a matthews family like mom dad were together had an older brother like i was the matthews family and they had sean who kind of came for like the rough broken home um and so, like, there was something in there for everyone to feel like you could relate to different characters at different points. Like, the characters would be going something through that you yourself would end up having to deal with as well. And like I said at the very beginning, I feel like I grew up with them. Like, it feels like they were classmates. Yeah. Even though I feel they, like that's the thing yeah. that Boy Me Throw did better than other sitcoms was they just tackled topics that every single person is going to encounter in their lives. You know, whereas a lot of other sitcoms were more and, and you know, Boy Meets World is a hilarious show. I, I honestly feel like Boy Meets World is the perfect example of a show that perfectly blended comedy with serious yeah. topics. Yeah. Um, but I feel like that's why they resonate so well still is because they did the best job of tackling things that every single person goes through, no matter who it is. At some point in your life, there's an episode of Boy Meets World that you're going to relate to because everybody goes through those things. Whereas other sitcoms were, you know, more concerned with being funny or being the wacky family or things like that. You know, Boy Meets World was um more apt to tackle more serious real life things because again they didn't really talk down to their audience they treated their audience as smart enough to handle talking about those topics where a lot of sitcoms didn't do that yeah i was glad you brought that up again because if not i was going to bring bring that up again because you said that earlier and very 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 true like they weren't they weren't afraid like necessarily of any issue to 
to go after. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, ultimately, like the legacy of Boy Meets World is going to live on forever. And I mean, it's going to be passed down to generation gender, to generation, really. So it just didn't get much better than that, gentlemen. Well, in closing here, finally, Hambone, as always, y- y'all know where you can find Mr. B-Roll myself, but how about a little bit quick plug of Palooza? Tell us where they can find your sexy ass, Hambone. Oh, my God. So many places. I'm on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, at Notorious underscore Bone. I am on TikTok and Hambone right here. Hambone with three A's, three O's. Um, I am on the Ego Drip podcast, a wrestling podcast, on every Sunday at 7 p.m. on Twitch and YouTube. Um, you can find me. I think that's everywhere you can find me. That's that's enough. That's enough. Of me. You don't need more of me than that. That's that's enough. I need never more. not get enough. I need of more of you in my life. <laughs> Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on this episode. Huge shout out and thank you to Tiffany for joining us as well. And hey, let's go watch some Boy Meets World's episodes on Disney Plus, right? Because they don't pay a shit for that. With my best friends, they will always stand by me. See you next time, folks. Boy Meets World.